Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Uh, still checking out the Junior CTF Capture the Flag competition. Uh, I have that same intro for literally everything that I do, and I'm getting tired of it. Can you guys tell me, like, what else I should say at the very start of a, of a video? Like, what the heck do I need to say or do? All right. Uh, this challenge I want to showcase is called Restricted Area. It was one of the admin challenges for whatever reason. I don't know what category that's supposed to be. Uh, 400 points, so I guess a few people solved it. Um, it says, you're given a trial run as an admin in the Mystery Shack. Your first test is to define access permissions and critical information according to this matrix. So we have an access control matrix um, for a couple users, um, and there are apparently a bunch of files that we can determine whether there are read, or read permissions on there. It says, the information is stored on this special storage disk, which you can download. Also, information about systems used in a program, which checks if the settings are correct. If you do it right according to the matrix, you'll receive the flag. Oh, okay. So, awesome. This doesn't look too difficult, then. Um, just kind of tedious because we'll have to like clone and recreate this access matrix. So I'm going to show you what I did. I'm not probably going to recreate everything. I'm just going to try and uh, really just show you what I did. <laughs> but well, I'll, I'll try and go through the steps and explain everything that I had done. So uh, what was this challenge called? Restricted area? Yeah. So we'll hop on over there. Take a look at what we just got. Restricted area. It is a gun zipped thing, so we can image it just like this. And I would want to mount this, but I couldn't really figure out how to initially. I think it's like if you run file on this thing, by the way, it is a file system. It is an exterior ex ext2 file system. So you can mount dash t ext2 uh, image bin, and I don't know if you can how you specify where it goes. Um, and only root can do it, so you have to be root. And, okay, cool, it is mounted then. So, I can see to my file system over here now, I have this 10 megabyte volume mounted over at Media Fuse, and I can just copy all these files. Actually, I'm probably going to have to change the owner of it. Sudo John, John, John. So now I should be able to copy the files hopefully out of here. Junior's restricted area, and we'll just paste them in there. What do you want? Why is they all permission denied? Everything should be belong to me. Please. Junior's restricted area. Do it. Okay, cool. So now we have all these things. Um, so what I ended up doing, again, I did have to actually like type out all of these things. Initially, I thought, like, oh, okay, I can just, um, well, actually, first, before I show you all that, I'll show you what this check 64 thing does, these check binaries do. Um, they must be run with root privileges. That got me super worried, I'm like, I don't really like that. Why do I have to run a CTF program that I've been given with, um, pseudo privileges? Uh, <laughs> whatever. I, I just ran IDA on it to take a look at what it does, and obviously it's just checking for the permission, so, okay, fine. Um, so it determines, okay, user ID 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, um, and what they can read, what files they can read. Um, apparently nothing right now, um, but it looks like it would give us the flag whether or not all these people could read these things. So, first we needed users that would match these user IDs, and apparently Dipper, Mabel, Seuss, Wendy, and Stan. Um, so, I added these with the user add command, I gave them a username, and I actually just used the dash u flag to specify their user ID. So that's how I can make sure they have that 1004, 1005, 1006. So I can actually show that in my password file. I have these here, and I just mapped the 1004, 1005 thing to the proper username. Um, and then I, I had tried to end up using Chone on everything. I had ran, ch like, to make the owner of all these files the individual. But when I did that, I accidentally realized I overwrote the things that were duplicated, like, once I set Dipper to be the owner of Reed, and later on I set Seuss to be the owner of, uh, I'm sorry, I set Dipper to be the owner of the Lazy Black Cat file, and then I set Seuss to be the owner of the Lazy Black Cat file, Dipper can no longer access it, Dipper no longer has Reed access to it. So I tried to Google and I tried to research how do I actually just set one permission to be able to read these things, and I guess there's like a set FAC, F-A-C-L? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
it's set file access controllers by a specific user. So here's what I did. Um, restricted area. I had all of these files that I created, like dipper.txt, that would be a list of, I just literally typed out, I used tab completion so I didn't have to type them all out, um, all the things that that user is supposed to read. And I did this again for Mabel and Seuss and all the others. And then I created this enforce ACL script. And what that would do is it would just read through all the text files, which are the, only, the extensions that have a username here, Dipper, Mabel, Stan, Seuss, and Wendy. And I would cat them out. I'd get the name of the file but, and while I read every single line in that in that file that I'm displaying, so while I read through every single one of those uh, file names that it's supposed to have permissions on, I ran that set facl command with the string to specify the user. Again, dipper.txt replacing .txt with nothing, so I just have dipper be their name, or Mabel or Seuss or Stan or Wendy, whatever whatever one I'm actually reading in the loop, and then I set the read set for the contents file and contents is going to be the file name lazy black cat or lazy black dog or lazy black pig etc etc et et so just again another like messy one-liner bash loop or multiple bash loops again i have two going here um but that enforces the acl so that i can actually you know like run the check program with a utility and the uh actual access control is to set up for us. So let me copy these to junior, um, what is it called, restricted area? Yeah. So now ideally, okay, we have all these things. And can I enforce ACL? Hopefully that worked on some of these things. I don't know. Um, I can run check 64 though and make sure all these things work. And I had some wrong things. I had some things missing. Sly white pig is red for dipper. Good. I'll pipe this to less so I can scroll through it. A Mabel has the last one they read is sly white cat. So, okay, so it didn't get sly white dog. So you'd have to add that by hand, which again isn't hard. It's just, it's the same command. And sly white cat. Okay, sly white dog is missing again for Seuss. Sly white pig is getting for the next one. And sly red cat. Oh, it's, and then 1008 is missing. Sly red cat. It gets up to sly white dog. Or silly white dog. So, then those I added by hand. I didn't have to do uh, all the others. And that will give you the proper flag once you run through it all. But that's how I had solved the problem. Again, it's not technically hard. It was just literally typing out all of these. <laughs> so I try to do it in a, in a clean and kind of easy way when I just loop through them all in, in separate files. Um, so I didn't have to type them all over and over and over again. But that's how I ended up doing it. You can see even in the Enforce ACL, I get a couple of errors. So I know things must be being interpreted the wrong way. But I digress um, it still seemed to work okay for all things but the last one, the last couple of fields. And I wonder why that is, honestly. It's not a, it's not an extra space or an extra new line character. There might just be things that, uh, for whatever reason, the syntax is hiccuping on. But whatever, that's how I solved the challenge. Again, just enforcing AC, the access control list and using the set, um command, set facl, set file access control list to specify just the read permission should be allowed by this user on these files. So, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Again, some interesting bash loops that I tend to use for quick and dirty CTF solutions um, and some interesting commands that you may be uh, may think are peculiar. But that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in a later video.